Well, the uh, start of each new year presents an opportunity uh, for us to assess our lives, uh, to note the things that we're doing well, that we've been doing well, and to continue doing those things well, but also to acknowledge areas where improvement and change might be needed and to commit to making uh, the changes uh, that are needed in various areas of our lives. We often joke about New Year's resolutions and how short-lived they often are, and some of us have had such a bad track record with New Year's resolutions that we really have just stopped even trying uh, to make any. I won't ask uh, for a show of hands. Uh, but as I recently preached, God has built hope into the fabric of life. And one of the ways that hope is built into life is that each new day, each new week, each new month, each new year is an opportunity to begin again, to make needed changes, to get right what we did not get right before, and to anticipate that something good is coming. The way that it's been uh, isn't necessarily the way that it has to continue to be. Things can uh, change. And that's why, even though I have failed to keep New Year's resolutions about diet and exercise, pretty much every year of my life, except for the years of 2010 and 2011, which I refer to as the golden age, uh, in spite of all of that, I have made some commitments as we start this new year that I believe I am going to keep this year. They start tomorrow, not today, because that can't start during, you know, football season, um, you know, these big bowl games and stuff. Uh, but I figure my chances are better if I keep setting goals, if I keep making resolutions, even if I fail a lot of the time, my chances are better if I do that than if I just permanently give up. And so I'm going to keep trying, and I would encourage you to keep trying. As I was seeking direction for this first Sunday of this new year of 2022 and what I should preach as we begin the new year, I was drawn to three commitments that I believe God wants us individually and collectively as a church to make this year. For some of us, these commitments uh, will represent a continuation of what you're already doing. Because you're already committed to one or two or maybe all three of the things that I'm going to be sharing. For some of the others of us, these will be new commitments or maybe recommitments. Maybe they were things that we once had been committed to, but we've faltered in those commitments. And so whether it's a remaining commitment uh, or a commitment that you have already been uh, faithful to or whether it's recommitting to something that you were once committed to but faltered, or whether you're committing for the very first time, my hope is that each and every one of us here today will embrace these three commitments for 2022 and beyond. The things that we're going to talk about are all things that Christians should be committed to. They are all things that will personally benefit those who are committed to them. And they are all commitments that I hope will mark Living Hope Church in 2022 and beyond. They are commitments that are pleasing to God. They are commitments that will make us more like Jesus. And they are commitments that will increase our fruitfulness for God's kingdom. Now, I'll let you know that I started out intending for these three commitments to be a one-week message uh, but I quickly realized that each commitment deserved its own message, and so I've made this a three-week series that we're starting today. And so the commitments that I hope will embrace and that will mark Living Hope Church are these. Number one, that each person would commit to God's mission for your life. Number two, that each person would emulate Christ's attitude toward the lost and condemned world. And number three, that each person would live according to Micah 6 and 8. And so these are the things that we're going to talk about today and over the next couple of upcoming Sundays. Now, we've been announcing that next Sunday would be a testimony Sunday 
uh, centered on our 40 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, but we're going to alter that just a bit and simply uh, have a testimony or two prior to the message uh, next Sunday and probably for a Sunday or two uh, following that. And so instead of doing all the testimonies in one Sunday, we're just going to spread them out over a few weeks and give us the opportunity to go through this series uh, that I believe is important for us to start out uh, this new year. And so for the next few minutes, I want to share on this first commitment that I hope every member of Living Hope Church will make for 2022. I'm asking us all to commit to God's mission for our lives. Stated as a personal commitment, I hope each person here today is able to say, I will commit to God's mission for my life. Now, it is absolutely true that God has a unique plan and unique assignments for each and every one of us. We're all called to a variety of different things, a, a variety of different endeavors and vocations in life. Some of us are called to be school teachers. Some of us are called to be businessmen, businesswomen. Some are called to work in the trades. Some are called to work in the medical field. Some are called to create art. Some are called to create music. Some are called to be housewives or, or uh, house husbands. Uh, wh whatever the case is, we, we all have different callings in life. Our giftings and callings are unique, and they lead us, God leads us, into many different endeavors in life. But for every single believer, no matter their unique calling, we are all called to the same primary mission for our lives. Whatever our unique fields of endeavor, however we earn a living, whatever unique giftings and the various ways those may, may be expressed, both for our own benefit and enjoyment and for the benefit of others and ultimately for the glory of God, whatever all of those different things are, we all share one common mission. It is the mission that Jesus left all of his followers, left all believers, and it is the Great Commission. If you are a school teacher, you are called to the Great Commission. That is your primary mission of your life. Christian business people are called to the Great Commission. That is the primary mission of your life. Christian artists are called to the Great Commission. That is the primary mission of your life. Every believer in Jesus Christ shares a common mission for their lives with every other believer. That mission is Christ's mission in the world. It is what God is doing in the world. It's what he's always been doing in the world, will continue to do until Christ returns. It is the Great Commission. It's found in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. It is the job that Jesus gave his disciples just before ascending into heaven. It's what he told his disciples to be doing until he returned. Think about the importance of this. Jesus is getting ready to return to heaven. And he gathers his disciples around them to tell them what he wants them to be doing until he comes back. That means that the Great Commission is really important. It is the primary mission of every Christian. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Let's continue today with our uh, relatively new practice of reading the Scripture together uh, as a congregation. So let's, let's read now. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. This is the Great Commission. This is the mission of the church. This is the mission of every believer in Jesus. If you are a Christian, if you were not aware of this, I hope that you were, but if you were not aware of this, this is to be the primary mission 
of your life. And I want you to note that there are two aspects of the Great Commission. Jesus told his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. That's evangelism. That's reaching people who don't know Jesus with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then he told them to teach those they reach to obey everything I have commanded. That's discipleship. Teaching those who have become Christians to obey everything that Jesus has commanded Christians to obey. And so the Great Commission includes both evangelism and discipleship. And so the mission of every believer in Jesus includes both evangelism and discipleship. We must be committed to both of these things. We must be committed to the mission of telling others about Jesus and seeing them come to saving faith in Christ. And we must be committed to the mission of helping those who come to faith then grow in their faith, to grow in their obedience to Christ. These are one and the same mission, two aspects of the one mission of the church and of each individual Christian believer. Many of us here today are committed to God's mission for our lives. We are committed to evangelism and discipleship. And if you are, I'm asking you simply today to remain committed, remain diligent to these commitments. Some of us here today have not truly been committed to God's mission for our lives. And I don't have anybody in mind. I just know in any group of people uh, that this is true. Or some of us, maybe we've been committed to one aspect of God's mission, perhaps being committed to discipleship, but relatively unconcerned about evangelism. Or perhaps we've been committed to evangelism, but relatively unconcerned about discipleship. If you've never understood that this is the mission of every believer, or you were once committed, but that commitment faltered, I'm asking you today to commit to God's mission for your life. Every single member of Living Hope Church must be fully committed to God's mission for the church, evangelism and discipleship. And so I'm asking you, as we enter into this new year, to make this commitment. And I want to share today a number of ways that we can practically walk out this commitment. There's no new information coming here, but these are reminders of ways that we should already know that, of how we can walk out this commitment to the Great Commission. And first, I want to share some practical ways that we can walk out the commitment to evangelism. And the first one is this, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ. Prayer is action. Prayer is important. And when it comes to evangelism and a whole lot of other things, but especially evangelism, I think prayer is often overlooked. It's overlooked. I won't ask for a show of hands, but my guess is it would be disappointing today if we honestly answered the question, how many of us are regularly praying for those who are lost. I, I'm guessing it would be a, a disappointing uh, show of hands. Pray specifically by name for people that you know have not received Christ. As you come into Sunday worship service, come in and fellowship, sure, that's a great thing. But I would encourage you as you're coming into worship each Sunday that you pray that during the worship service, someone would be drawn to Jesus during that service. Each week, pray for the kids in Living Hope Kids, that some of them, even at their young ages, would come to recognize their need of a Savior and that they would turn to Jesus in faith. Pray that people in our congregation who God has gifted with the gift of evangelism, they would discover that gift and they would begin to use that gift. 
Pray for yourself that you would have boldness to invite people to church. Pray for boldness to share your story of coming to faith in Jesus every time you're given an opportunity to do so. Pray for boldness, willingness to share the gospel. Consider prayer walking your neighborhood or other neighborhoods in the community. Focusing your prayers on those in the neighborhood who don't know Jesus. You say, well, how do I, how do I know? You can assume that large numbers of people in any neighborhood do not know Jesus. So just walk through that neighborhood praying, God, everyone in this neighborhood who doesn't know you, I ask that you would reveal yourself to them. God, those people at house number 371, if they don't know you, lead them into a relationship with Jesus. Pray. Prayer walk your neighborhood. And these are just a few examples. But one of the ways that we can participate in the Great Commission in the area of evangelism is to pray. It is, a, it is an important action of those that are committed to evangelism. Here's another one. Serve in Living Hope Kids. You hear this over and over and over here, and I'm not going to apologize for continuing to say this. There is no greater evangelistic opportunity that you will ever find than telling children about Jesus. None. None. And so if you care about evangelism, you want to be involved in evangelism, serving in children's ministry is perhaps the greatest thing that you could ever do. And if I could be honest for a minute, I would suggest to us today that unless there is a physical limitation that prevents it, I think that every Christian, as a matter of commitment to the Great Commission and specifically the evangelistic aspect of the Great Commission, every Christian that is physically able to do so should be involved in children's ministry. I knew I'd get at least two amens on that. Thank you, Robin. Here's one. Commit to invite people to church. Again, I won't ask for a show of hands, and, but I, I think it would be surprising if we saw how few of us are regularly inviting people to church. And again, this is, this is nothing like about you personally. This is just the way it is. This is just... This is just kind of what the truth is about most Christians in most places. Most Christians are not inviting people to church on a regular basis. Uh, I fail at this often. So let's make a commitment this year. Set some kind of goal that's doable for yourself. Let, let's say something like this. I will commit to invite one person a month to church. So well, that doesn't sound like much. Well, compared to none over 12 years, it's a lot. It's a lot. And if all of us in here committed to invite one person a month to church, my goodness, the number of invitations that would be going out compared to what's probably the case now, the potential of that is dynamic. The potential of that is dynamic. Maybe you want to be a little more aggressive. Commit to invite one person a week to church but find something that you can make a consistent commitment and keep it. Invite people to church. Use our church business cards. Use our church brochure as a simple way to put information in someone's hand. Here's a great way to invite people to church. Use social media to invite people to church. Now, I would encourage you not to use social media very much. But when you do use social media, one of the great things you can do with it is use it to invite people to church. I think it makes a difference. Now, I've shared this with you before, but I think it makes a difference when we, when we do things like, like things that our church posts on social media. So I'd encourage you to do that as well. It's, it's taxing. It's taxing. You've got to move the mouse like two inches to get to the like little icon and then left click on it. It's very taxing. 
But if we really set our minds to it this year, we could, we could do it. We, we could have things the church posts get 30 and 40 and 50 and 70 likes instead of 2 and 3 and 4. You say, why does that matter? Because it's seen by other people. And when a church is getting 70 and 80 likes on something that they post, people think, wow, that church is engaged. Something's going on there. And when they get two and three, people say, huh, it doesn't seem like anybody's too excited about what's going on around there. Welcome to the new year. (laughs) So use social media to invite people. Serve in outreach ministries and events. We have some great things that we do around here. The annual bike giveaway, great outreach event. The bed brigade, a great community service and outreach event. The annual cookie walk, a great outreach event. Take time. I've encouraged you in this direction many times throughout the years. Take time to write out your story of how you came to faith in Jesus. Commit it to memory. And then be ready to share it any time an opening is presented. And learn, and learn to even create openings. Create openings. The classic example I've used over and over is those of you who still get your hair cut, you sit down, the person says, so tell me a little bit about yourself. And instead of talking about the Buckeyes and all of that kind of stuff, say, well, if I'm going to talk to you about myself, I have to talk to you about the most important thing in my life. My faith in Jesus Christ. It's an opening. It's an opening we miss a lot. Read the book, Tell Someone. Prepare yourself to be able to present the gospel when given the opportunity. Committing to God's mission for your life, the Great Commission, means making a commitment to evangelism. It is not something that just some Christians do. It is what all Christians are called to. And so I'm asking all of us to make the commitment this year and walk it out in some of these practical ways that we can participate in evangelism. Now, let me share some practical ways we can walk out a commitment to discipleship. And while I certainly want you to be very uh, committed and concerned about your own discipleship, what I have in view here is how we can assist our brothers and sisters with their discipleship, how we can help others grow in their relationship with Jesus. And we're going to start the same place we did with evangelism. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Pray specifically that they would grow in their faith, that they would grow spiritually, that they would be continually maturing in their faith, becoming more and more like Jesus. Again, prayer is action. Pray by name for people you are close to in this church that they would continue to mature spiritually. Serve. Serve in ways that aid the spiritual growth of your brothers and sisters. Lead or host a small group. Help staff Sunday service ministries, which are a prime opportunity for spiritual growth as we encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit in corporate worship, as we hear the word preached, as we give and as we pray. Help to organize events that bring people together. Help with women's events and men's events and youth events, knowing that any event that brings people together creates opportunities to encourage others in their faith and to aid others in their spiritual growth. Here's another practical way to walk out a commitment to discipleship. Find someone to follow and find someone to lead. Another way of saying it is find someone to mentor you and find someone that you can mentor. Find someone that's a little further down the road than you are spiritually and ask them to spend some time with you. It can be as simple as a once a month meeting over, over breakfast. And then find someone that you're a little further down the road than they are spiritually and begin to develop a relationship with them, a relationship that has the purpose of helping them grow in their faith. Someday we may try to find a way to facilitate this 
here at Living Hope Church in a more formal way, but honestly, these kind of relationships work best when they happen naturally, when they happen organically. And so I would encourage you to be on the lookout. Who can you follow? Who can you lead? Who can you get help from? Who can you provide help to? Here's another way to participate in the discipleship of your brothers and sisters. Attend, lead, or host small groups and classes. And I want to focus right now just on the attending part. Brothers and sisters, attendance matters. Participation matters. Even when you're not the leader, it matters whether you are there or not. Because groups and classes give everyone a chance to make an impact on others in the group. It is not just leaders who are able to influence the spiritual lives of participants in connect groups and classes. Every group member, every class participant can be used by God to share something that will aid the spiritual growth of others. And so I encourage you to not just think about connect group involvement as something to benefit your spiritual life, but look at it as God giving you an opportunity to positively benefit the spiritual lives of your brothers and sisters in Jesus. And on that note, I encourage you to attend fellowship events. Every one of them holds the potential to open up conversations that give you an opportunity to encourage someone in their faith, to share spiritual insights with someone, to offer a loving challenge to someone that they need to submit to God in some area of their life. I could give a lot of other examples, but fellowship events open up conversations that can have spiritual impact in the lives of our brothers and sisters. And so it matters when we're not there. We need to start looking at things like this, not as just fun, which they are, but as fun with a purpose. Fun that might open up an opportunity for us to make an eternal difference in the life of a brother or sister. And so all of these are practical ways to walk out a commitment to God's mission for your life, a commitment to the great commission to evangelism and discipleship. And so here's what I'm asking of everyone today and going forward. If this is your church home, I'm asking you to be committed to God's mission for your life, this mission that he has for every believer. Make the decision today to commit and then begin to practically walk it out. If this is a new commitment for you, I can imagine that you're likely going to ask a question, and that question is probably, where do I start? And the answer is really that you can start with any of the things that I've shared today. Just look at the list that's on your sermon outline. You can start with any of those things, but I'd encourage you to start with prayer. Start with prayer, and then finding one area of service that serves the Great Commission. That's how I would encourage you to start. You say, Brian, I, I'm making a commitment today that I've not made before. Where do I start? Start by praying for evangelism. Start by praying for discipleship. And then commit to one area of service that serves the Great Commission. If this is a commitment that you already have, a question that I hope you'll be asking is this. What should I add to what I'm already doing? What should I add to what I'm already doing? And the quick answer is, add anything that you're not already doing. Just look at the list. Anything you're not doing on that list, add that. And I want us to think through these lists that are on your outline a little bit today, because if we're not careful, we're, we're going to think that we need to be specialists, that there's too much on this list for us to do. And I don't really think that's true. So I want to think about these lists a little bit today. If you have your sermon outlined, I'd encourage you to actually look at them as I talk through this. But let, let's think about these. Really, we all should be praying regarding evangelism and discipleship. 
That's not just something for a select few people to do. Every Christian should be doing that. We all should be able to tell the story of how we came to faith in Jesus, and we all should be able to share the gospel message. And those things generally are not taking up a lot of our time anyway because they are opportunities that are presented to us at a moment in time, and then they pass. And so once we are prepared to share, it's really just looking and waiting for the opportunities. So that's not taking a great amount of time for many of us. Unless our schedule makes it impossible, we should all be in a small group or class on a regular basis. Now, we don't make this a requirement of membership around here, but we really should be active in groups and or classes. Again, these are not huge time consumers. Most of our uh, groups around here meet, if, if you really look at it, they meet about 16 times a year. 52 weeks of the year, most of our groups are going to meet 16 times a year. These are not high bar commitments. They're not. So we all should be doing that. We all should be inviters. And again, this is not a high time commitment. We all should participate in fellowship events the church offers at least regularly, if not every single time. There are a few of these throughout the year, not a high time commitment. And so if we just look at the things that we all should already be doing from the list that basically leaves children's ministry, outreach ministries and events, serving in some way that aids discipleship, and finding someone to follow and someone to lead. So the things we all should be doing from the list that I provided you today, that only leads like four things that are sort of like electives. We all should be doing all the rest of that stuff. And then there are some electives that we can choose from. And so what I would say to those of you who are already committed to evangelism and the Great Commission is in addition to prayer, and doing the things that we all should be doing anyway, add one area of service. Add one area of service. And then that leaves the most challenging part of this, uh, at least from experience, I would say this is the most challenging, and that is taking the step of finding someone to follow and someone to lead. And you can work toward that. But you would say, what do I do next? I'm already committed. I would say add one area of service. Here's the point. None of these things are overly time consuming. Many of them are just about readiness to seize opportunities when they're presented. And the rest are really manageable. They're manageable. And they're set up so that we can just offer consistent service toward the fulfillment of the Great Commission without taxing any one person beyond what is reasonable. And so the answer to what should I add is anything you're not already doing. Until the point that you can say with integrity that your walk is consistent with someone who is fully committed to God's mission for your life, the Great Commission. If we will all make this commitment this year, I believe that we can have the most fruitful year that we have ever had, both personally and collectively. This can be the most fruitful year ever for you, and it can be the most fruitful year ever for Living Hope Church if we'll make this commitment. And so it's my prayer that everyone here today and everyone that considers this their church home that everyone would fully commit to God's mission for your life. Next week, I'll be asking us to commit to emulating Christ's attitude toward the lost and condemned world. I consider next week to be a very important, I consider these next two to be very important messages. I hope that you'll make a point of being here, and uh, I think it would be really beneficial to you and to our church if you were able to. Let's stand. Let's stand.